Can you hear me? OK, great. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, today's session, I'm very proud to be here with uh, two of my co-speakers as well. Let me introduce myself. I'm Shadab Hussain, uh, 21 years at Wipro, and I manage Wipro's data, AI, and analytics business in Americas. Uh, Wipro is actually a $10 billion, 75-year-old consulting and services firm. We actually do the business in lots of different services, especially in the data and analytics as well. Um, we are very proud to be the America's Partner of the Year. This event, we got the America's Partner of the Year Award, and it is only possible, thank you. And it was only possible through amazing transformation journeys that we have done with our customers. And I'm very honored today to be on the stage with one of our esteemed customers from Integral Life Sciences, Gurpreet Kaur and Viral. They will introduce when they speak. I'll just do a little opening act and hand it over to them. Um, it's the beauty of those engagements that we have done with Integral Life Sciences and the other such engagements is not just about the complexity of the technology. It's not about the number of objects that we moved. It's not about the numbers of data or the size of the data that we did. It's about, that's just a means. It's really about the goal that we achieved. And in this case, this particular journey that we will talk about today is about how to improve the patient care. That's what this journey is about. That's what actually makes me proud. And that's what make us, give us a satisfying feel that at the end of all those bits and bites, there is an end goal. There is a goal of improving the patient care. And how does that really work? During the pandemic, 28 million elective surgeries were deferred. There was just no capacity. And ever since, the supply chain issues still persist. You know, the dreadful supply chain issues, today we go to buy a car, we know how long it takes. Those exist in the medical devices industry as well. So today, to improve the patient care, it is about getting a patient to get to the treatment or the overdue surgery faster. That is about improving the patient care. A patient who is actually suffering from the pain need to get to those elective surgeries. We can't keep deferring them. And to get them that care, you need to be able to move your products at the right time, at the right places. The hero behind all that really is the data. An ability to understand where the demand would be, where should we move the products, with the reliability, with the confidence. That's what is about improving the patient care. It is not visible. You can see the, neuro, the surgical products that Integra makes, those look hero, they are. But then moving them in the right place at the right time is the heroic act. And that's what this story is about. As I call it, the triple A's of data. The availability, making the data available so the right users, the decision makers, can make the decision in time. The assurance, they should be able to make the decision with the confidence. And the third is the awareness. Giving them data in time with quality is not enough. You also need to put an effort to make them aware about the data so that they can understand the data and make the confident and right decisions. This is what this story is about. In order to begin, let me invite Gurpreet Kaur. Give her an applause, please. Um, who is the VP of Data and Analytics at Integral Life Sciences and has led this transformation. This is just the beginning. Over to you, Gurpreet. Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you all for making it to the last day. Hey, you know, in a COVID safe environment, right? Um, and, but on a serious note, it's uh, been an amazing last couple of days, right? To absorb in all this knowledge and all these nuggets to take back to our respective organizations and to make an impact. So. Uh, and that's what I'm here to share with you guys today and what uh, you know, Databricks and Wipro have done for us. 
Um, as uh, Shabad mentioned, I, I'm responsible for um, enterprise applications, global analytics, and strategic initiatives at Integra Life Sciences. Um, Integra Life Sciences is a global leader in uh, medical technology. Um, so we focus on providing the tools to our surgeons, to our clinicians, and limiting uncertainty so that they can focus on what's important, which is patient care, and making it uh, you know, seamless for the, for the patient to get the care that, that they deserve. Um, so uh, it, for Integra Life Sciences is a, a, a multi-billion dollar company. We are about 5,000 uh, employees uh, globally, worldwide, um, and uh, you know, we provide multitudes of products uh, for neurosurgery all the way from head to toe. So you can think about neurosurgery to hernia to uh, breast reconstruction to ankle and, uh, and so on and so forth. So all surgical uh, units that we provide for um, our, our clinicians. Um, so you can see, you know, healthcare is continuously changing and evolving throughout uh, throughout the globe. Um, it's rapidly changing, so therefore we have to ensure that our systems support that. Um, so we went out into this journey um, <clears throat> on a strategic transformation project, which essentially, you know, as Shabad was mentioning, having data available, especially during the COVID days, no, um, no reps are allowed in the hospitals, you cannot have a you know, side by side conversation with the uh, with the surgeons. You can't train them on new products or new techniques and things of that nature. It became really, really critical for us to rely on the data and making that available and accessible and getting it in the hands of our um, our, our commercial organizations so that they can support our surgeons and clinicians to make decisions as well as you know, getting the, uh, the products faster to them. So this allowed us to give visibility into um, our inventory, our consignment inventory that was out there, um, where the products are located in the field, and how do we get you know, these products back to the hospitals and the, and the clinics. Um, so we uh, originally were on a uh, traditional data warehouse. Um, so as um, most of you could probably think back, you know, eight, nine hours of nightly run uh, to get that access to that data. And when, when you're operating globally, um, you know, that doesn't cut it, right? So getting your data a day later, if you're in Japan, a day 0.5 later, um, you know, we had a joke uh, a, a couple of years ago when we um, onboarded uh, our largest uh, a division, Codman Division, neurosurgery in Japan, and we were doing the implementation and trying to give them the data. Um, and, and we were there in uh, in Tokyo, and the team there said, you know, um, the amount of time it takes for us to get the data on our reports, um, Veral could actually fly back home and come back, and we, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that was a running joke. He's like, you can go fetch the data and bring it back. That's how long it takes. So anyway, so we went out, uh, ventured out into this new journey. Um, and Viral is going to take you through that new journey. Uh, so uh, this noble cause of, of making sure the patient care, I think Gurpreet uh, management uh, was very serious about that this is not an acceptable way of doing a business from a data standpoint of view. So uh, it came down to Gur Gurpreet and, and Gurpreet and me were just talking. We started this journey and we had a team, current team of on, the, on our legacy IBM uh, data stage, if you guys have heard on that stuff, which, which runs for long hours and basically there was no flexibility. You cannot expand it. If you want to expand it, you have to really, it's a nightmare to make sure that things are working good and making sure that um, we basically start uh, looking into those details. So as, as Gurpreet mentioned about the joke, that was a it, it was a serious, there was a fact of our data uh, journey and we started talking about what should we do. So we, we started um, uh, a partnership with Wipro, we had a partnership with Wipro, but we started engaging with Wipro 
on this uh, project. And our current existing team also basically is from Wipro. So what we did was we started doing small POCs across all the different technologies, right, or to start this project because it was something which we never explored it. It was the magnitude which we were all scared about. And, and this platform was, was emotional as we say it, right? We need the data. If it doesn't get it in the right way or a right fashion, I think it gets impacted uh, at a lot of places and decision making, right? So we had to be careful and we had a legacy of basically this system uh, being impacted and getting a lot of uh, things uh, not right. So we want to be very cautious. So when we did this journey, we made sure that the end user should not be impacted. Means the way they are running their reports, they should get the same way they should run them. But how they get the report was what this journey was all about. So if you look into this um, diagram on, on all of them, we started doing a POC with three technologies. We went on a traditional SQL Server technology on Azure to basically just make sure that we can have that. We then did an um, Azure Data Factory and sometimes a Synapse combination when we did the second POC. And the third combination, which I think surprised us all, was this DataBricks Data Lake journey with an uh, Azure Data Factory pipelines uh, basically triggering those, those uh, uh, workbooks for our data lake. And it was so much improvement that I think it was, it was a fantasy for us to some extent that can this even happen, right? When we started measuring it with this, um, with, with our legacy system and we kind of were a little bit cautious because I think it was too much happiness and you can't digest when you have too much of happiness to see that is it even right or wrong, right? So we started uh, with a cautious note, but I think if you look at it, that we followed, uh, I think, with the partnership of Wipro, Microsoft, Databricks, and our, uh, our current team who knew the functional knowledge about it. We followed the same process of uh, bronze, silver, and gold kind of a methodology which Databricks gives you to clean your data at every hop of it, right? So if you see these three boxes, which we have, uh, last three boxes, which we are telling us CRF and EDW layers and the gold of it, was all our cleansing process, which we did it, right? And we, we did same traditional uh, architecture. I, I think most of them is out of the box architecture, nothing fancy, created our, our integrated servers on on-prem and created our, our servers on Azure to make it work. But this was the first application which Integra was ever deploying at this magnitude on Azure. So we had a different security challenges, questions about it. But we, with, with great partnership of our uh, company and with Wipro, we started executing it. And with, I think it was an around eight to nine months of a development journey. But what we did was because it was emotional and because we, it was very sensitive for us, we ran our legacy system and this particular platform in parallel for three months. That, is a, that was a success factor for us because that was, I think that made us so confident. And don't get me wrong, we had bugs when we moved into it, a coding bug, not the performance bug. But we were able to identify with our system which was, which was used by users and we keep on improving it. And to the surprise, I think we, were, we made it so good in after three to four months of parallel running that I think we were very confident when we flipped the switch and we have flipped the switch. I think now it's a first quarter close which is happening on the system and I'm proud to say that there is no open technical issues to be very precise or a data integrity issues to be very precise, right? So that was a phenomenal um, idea or a common sense which we do. So I think if, if you guys have something which is in legacy, I would highly encourage you guys to do this because rather than getting excited and moving to the journey very quickly, I think doing it cautiously will help you guys to uh, make this data integrity. At the end of the day, how fast you bring your data doesn't matter if it's wrong, mm -hmm. right? So integrity is the core of it and that's what we made sure that every row and everything which went into this new system has the data integrity. So we did 500 pipelines, and I think we basically did 700 pipelines and 500 data objects to see on this uh, diagram as we mentioned. Okay, so what did we get it, right? And what's, okay, after all this talks, how, what is the facts? The facts are, 
if you look on the on this diagrams on the bar chart we were able to release our data warehouse around 3 a.m. in the morning, which was around 6 a.m. in the morning, which started eight hours of the journey. So it was at least, I should say, 2x to 3x improvement for us when we started doing this. And uh, this system is used, to, uh, uh, is used by a lot of other systems to take the data and process it for the further. So it was having an impact down the road also to make sure that we, if we release this early, those system gets refreshed like Salesforce, our Power BI and all of them were also be getting the data early on it. So that was our first achievement on it, right? So the total journey, if you look at it, was end to end if we ran it, it was a 16 hours journey if we run it on a sequential form of it, right? So when we ran this all program in sequential stand, it took us 16 hours to run on it but in parallel it used to complete on eight or nine hours on our legacy system. If that same sequence, when you run on a sequential way, it took us five hours to complete on it, right? So it was again a, at least three X of the improvement which uh, basically needs to happen, keeping the data integrity intact, keeping the user can run the report the way they have ran it before and getting the same data what they need to do on it. So, and that's, as, as, you, as you see, we have, were able to also reduce a huge footprint of our virtual machines, but that, that is also, as you all know, it's not just removing the virtual machines. That means you are removing the security threat of every virtual machine you are, you are moving outside your data center. You are, you are patching, you are, your upgrades, your OS, because that was all done by our Integra engineering team, now has now moved, uh, that headache becomes, I shouldn't say headache, but that's more of a platform as a service, because we use the native technologies of Microsoft, which was Azure Data Factory and, and Databricks, which we don't have to do anything, and, and periodically as a platform, as a service on that one. So that helped us to basically um, maintain this stuff. There are a couple of critical reports, which was, as, as Gurpreet mentioned, right, that it was, it was taking some, some of the international team to, even if, even if we released at 6 a.m. In, in U.S. time, it was almost 1 p.m. in Europe, and Japan was way beyond into that, right? So it was their half day before they can see their critical data reports. Now we have come up around 2, uh, two, two o'clock in the morning, so they get it earlier at eight or nine in the morning for the internationals and Asia Pacific to get this done, right? So that made a huge impact for them. They were, I think we took a day ahead of them on making their decisions, making the critical, and why it matters during the quarter end sales and quarter end surgeries, a day matters, right? I think if you guys are there, it's, it's the goal which we are basically aiming at, right? It sounds like, okay, what's the big deal? But they can make that decision in eight in the morning, execute it to get those results down over here. So that was one of the basically amazing thing which we felt it, and I think uh, we basically, our management was, as I said, was, took, uh, was a bit surprised to see that we can achieve it. But I think this has a good power. This made a base for our company to now explore all the other opportunities what Azure can offer on into it. With our data stage, I think adding a new module, if we want to add a new module, it was a nightmare to do it. Oh my God, am I impacting it eight hours? Will this eight hour goes to 16 hours? Is this acceptable or not? This is now just add more clusters, run more workers in parallel, get the things done, and put this into an action uh, as, we, as we are seeing on this one. So now this has enabled, that. that's, that's what I think uh, we mentioned about it. How does this impact the patient care and how does, now everything makes available this data neat, clean, and in early manner is impacting our patients. And that's what, what we are getting paid for and that's what I'm proud to be a part of the company where we are impacting those patients' life and making sure that they get the timely uh, uh, products for their surgeries in, in, a, in a better way. So. That's, this has helped us tremendous uh, uh, from a company standpoint of view, from a patient standpoint of view, and ethically from the satisfaction from us that we were able to contribute back to the society in, in a way that basically that we were able to help those patients, uh, uh, whether it's visib invisible or visible, but we were able to support them in their surgeries in the timely manner. Thank you. So one of the things that I want to point out is a couple of things to add on there. You know, selecting a partner is really, really critical 
to your success. Um, and you know, ensuring having the the experience and our relationship with Wipro and Wipro's relationship with Databricks really helped us excel during this this journey. Um, you know, as any project, you always have hurdles, but it's about how do you overcome those hurdles and uh, you know the path that's taken. And we were we did run into multiple hurdles. Um, Databricks did step up and, and support that. Wipro and their partnership, they stepped up and support, supported that and brought in the experts to um, you know, help us through this path. I mean, think about it, nine months going from a traditional data warehouse to modernizing the, into this new platform. And now the possibilities are endless, right? I mean, I think about all the things that I've learned in the last couple of days, you know, thinking at Partner Connect and taking care, taking advantage of some, you know, the ML and AI functions. Now we're able to do that and we're, and then we'll be able to actually impact the patient's lives even, even faster and greater. Yeah. And I think, uh... One of the important learning is also, it's about, I talked about the triple A's, right? The last one is awareness. Awareness includes not just knowing your data. Awareness also includes knowing what impact you make through your actions. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, the awareness within the company, they're making a data culture where people know that one data error could actually impact a patient. So that awareness that this is not just one byte, this is not just one digit, this is actually maybe somebody's, um, you know, the quality of life, somebody's life literally. So from a, looking at the data from bits and bytes to, in this case, life and health, that gives a paradigm change. Mm -hmm. And then everybody becomes owner. They start owning. People are generally kind, they want to do the right thing. Once you translate that, and I think it's very important because many times data should not just become a technological problem. It is a business. Data is the business, and business is about data, and there should be a linkage between that. That is what actually creates the culture. Thank you. We'll open it up to any questions. Yep. So I have the mic. Anyone is having question, please raise your hand. I'll give the mic to them. Maybe I can ask one. So, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, what is the roadmap after this? As in, like, uh, technology-wise, in the in terms of uh, like the time has reduced from eight hours to one hour and forty-five mm -hmm. minutes. Like, in terms of time for the jobs to run, and in terms of uh, uh, the technical tech stacks as well, it's pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, great work. But like, what ne what's next? So essentially, this allows us. We're running. A, a, a couple of times a day now, twice a day. Um, but the platform is gonna allow us to, to run multiple times a day, right? So getting that data from our source systems, our ERP applications, um, and out to you know, our business users that need it, that require it the most. Um, so that's number one, we haven't ventured out into that. Second is, if you, uh, you know, as Viral was talking, we actually rewrote the business logic as it existed today, because we wanted to make sure that the, we didn't compromise on data um, quality. Um, and we couldn't afford to lose the credibility with our business users that, oh no, this is not accurate. Um, but we didn't do any uh, sort of uh, performance improvements and, and, and what else we could provide. Um, currently, it is still analytics. We are now going to be able to do predictive, prescriptive, and you know, do modeling to be able to provide those types of details back to the business users, uh, you know, guided selling perhaps, um, so things of that nature, which now this platform is going to allow us to do that. Does that help? And, and I tell to my team always that now we have created a runway where you can land a Boeing, right? So now you have all the chances where you need to take this into a next level of it, right? The, the runway, which was current one, I don't think so we were able to land any planes down there, right? So that's, that's the way of the vision we are laying out so that we have created this fundamental uh, technology uh, platform where we there is, it's flexible, and we are able to take an advantage as the business use cases come up. We don't now have to worry, oh my God, do I, do I impact my data warehouse and make, uh, make my uh, customer happy or my business user happy? 
and that's not the choice we should have it. And also when the technological choices were made, right, moving from legacy ETL tool to the data engineering tool, it is not just about the engineering, it's also about ability to create an engine where you can actually create these AI ML apps applications, right? So we actually, um, we actually create something called what we call as analytics app store. The analytics app store actually will operate on the data foundation and then you can actually create different apps. Those apps could be, you know, like predicting how many surgeries would happen, right? Because things can change. Look, we are still living in a very dynamic world. There are still, you never know what will happen actually three months down the line, really. So that ability to use this data and then predict is what is actually paramount. So I think this new data foundation will help. Now, previously also you could do that, but the problem is typically what happens is you end up spending 80% of the time actually in preparing the data than rather than actually getting the result. That's because the, there, there's no data foundation properly. With this, we can actually cut it down, maybe 50-50 mm -hmm. or maybe even less. That's really the goal and the vision. So the best part about it was we had something to compare with, right? We had something to compare with, right? So, so the journey of our, where we, I think, uh, we're very confident about it because it was done by business users already uh, was blessed and was running for n numbers of years. So we just did the simple math, A is equal to B, B is equal to C, so A is equal to C, right? So we did not go much on an exposure of a business component, but making sure the performance of the business user platform is, is basically well maintained because we introduced Synapse instead of Microsoft SQL now, right? So that the way the query performs on a SQL server does not perform in the same way in the Synapse one, right? And it's a different way of looking at it. So work with Microsoft on some places where, where we see it. I think other than that challenge of basically the performance of the end user, which we have a Cognos platform as a front end and Power BI to some extent, we, we were able to have that same data models or the same stuff being, and, and we, data stage is written in SQL, so using PySQLs and, and some of them have a Spark and some of the flavors of Python we were able to bring from eight hours to one hour, 45 minutes. And some, as, as Gurpreet mentioned, right, it was, most of them was not a hard work because the platform was so, so good that few things were done, uh, most of the things were done by them, but only those, those selected things, even though they were selected, we had to con, uh, put our efforts into that. By the way, this engagement was also actually they, uh, this engagement won an award by Microsoft as well uh, as one of the best modernization uh, study this year. So just a few days, just last week. Correct. So that's like, it's a great engagement. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think Microsoft was very, I think Wipro, Microsoft, Databricks, they were so much invested into our success, right? Which I, I think, uh, which I have not seen it in previous ERP eras or where I've worked in. They were very invested into this success. They, in fact, Databricks was not a Microsoft own, own product, even though they host it, right? But they recommended us to go on that because Synapse was there. If you look at it, Synapse can do the same things of doing all this, what Databricks can do it. But I think they accepted at that time when we started that project that Synapse is not mature yet. Let's be very honest about it. And that came from Microsoft itself, which was, which was a good thing to basically uh, uh, be, be, that feels confident, right? That they are not taking this just as a sales pitch, right? They are really into us to get this journey, uh, really modernization. So I think that's, that helped us a lot as, as, as we were ignorant about it, right? We were more on legacy data state side of it. I think that those small, small things really helped us uh, to gain the confidence. Okay. Any other question? We still have some time. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.